Our next topic is a bit of a tedious one. It's the idea of walks, paths, circuits, cycles, a bunch of things that are super similar and easy to confuse. In general, I don't tend to enforce on my students that they memorize these things, although some people may require that of you. I just try to get the idea of these things. So the first one we have is called a walk. A walk in a graph, I will visualize with my pointer here, and then we'll write it down. A walk is any way that you can traverse the edges of the graph. So I could go, I could go A, B, D, A, B, E, C, F, E, B. So let's try to write down an example of a walk. You could go A, B, D, A, B, C, E, F. Is that what I said? It doesn't really matter. So there's an example of a walk. Notice it doesn't matter that I revisited vertices or anything like that. All that matters is that there are edges connecting them. There's an edge between AB, there's an edge between BD, there's an edge between D and A, there's an edge between A and B, and so on and so on and so on. It's just a way to move around the graph. Very intuitive. A path is one where you can't repeat vertices. So I'll give you an example of a path in this same graph. So we're going to paste that same graph again. An example of a path might be, we'll do this in blue to emphasize it. It is A, B, D, E, C, and F. That is a valid path. Let's write down an invalid path so we can sort of emphasize this. About an invalid path would be A, B, D, E, B, C, F. This is invalid because B appears twice. So let's highlight that in red. B appears twice, which means that this is not a valid path. Let's next talk about a circuit. It's the walk equivalent of a way of going in a circle. So in that same graph, an example of a circuit might be A, B, E, F, C, B, A. So let's write that down. We'll write that in blue again to say it's valid. A, D, B, E, F, C, B, A. And this is valid. Even though we've reused vertices, we have not reused any edges. Let's verify that. We go A, D, B, E, F, C, B, A. We've revisited a vertex, but we haven't reused edges. The important thing here is that the edges are distinct in a circuit. A cycle is the same, but the vertices need to be distinct, except for the endpoints. So let's do our final example, which is a cycle. We're going to do A, D, E, F, C, B, A. So this is valid even though it reuses the vertices at the end. When we say the vertices are distinct, it means all but the endpoint vertices of it are distinct. So that is a cycle. Cycles turn out to be the most important. So in general, that would be pretty much all that we talk about in this class because they're really important in a graph. A graph is acyclic if it has none of these things. Notice being acyclic seems a little weird. So let's draw an example of a graph that is acyclic. We're going to have the following graph, which looks like this. This graph is acyclic. It has no cycles because there's no way I can start and end at the same vertex. You can try to prove that there are no cycles. It turns out that can be a little difficult. So we'll have a couple of ways of doing this because looking at it, it might not be so obvious, but there are no sort of closed loops in this graph. If you draw the graph well, it can be obvious. If you do not draw the graph well, it can be very hard to see if there are cycles or are not cycles. In particular, if you draw a graph such that there's lots of overlapping lines, it can be difficult visually to see that.